being married. I can't afford Dan and Shay. Will you sing this song <laughs> at my daughter's wedding? But I can't afford Danielle and Shay. <laughs> Either way, this is like my this is like my like job security song. Like even if I don't do anything good, like I have a song on the board. Like we have this reality that at the end of our lives, like there's going to be Laura Veltz, You know, she wrote song, song, and many others. Like it's a thing. Like you're only going to be remembered for like a handful of songs at the end of your life. And I just have a feeling this is going to be one. So the song is called Speechless. <clears throat> I am Laura Bell. It's been such a pleasure. You guys rule. This has been incredible. Yeah. You say you'll be down in five. The smell of your perfume is floating down the stairs. You're fixing up your hair like you do. I know that I'll be a man. The second that I see you And you won't be surprised It happens every time it's nothing new It's always on a night like tonight I think I, you can read my mind Cause when you look at me with those eyes I'm speechless Staring at you standing there in my chest what it do with you me and a secret Watching you is all that I can do oh, I'm speechless You already know that you're my weakness And after all this time I'm just as nervous Every time you walk into a room Without even trying Thank you so much for being so nice to us. Um, this has been awesome. This is like the best place I've ever played. It's very cool. It is. You guys are magic. Thank you. Um, this is going to be my last song too. I'm going to finish with, uh, this was my first song. Uh, this is actually my first cut and then ended up being my first single and my first number one song. Also, 
Um, That's but, very extreme. Sorry. Dream case scenario. But again, I slept. I slept in parking lots for like ten years. You just didn't you see it. You earned it. You earned it. You didn't see it, but it was real. <laughs> um, once I was sleeping in a sleeping bag in Nebraska when I was fifteen, outside of a Walmart, and got a gun pulled on me. But he went away because he was trying to rob me. I was like, man, I'm sleeping in a sleeping bag outside There's of Walmart right now. <laughs> Not sure what He's you like, want. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. That's a good pushback. You need anything? I can get something there. I'm gonna rob it, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> Solidarity. <laughs> but uh, this is a song, I wrote this with Rodney Clausen and Chris Tompkins. And Rodney, the night before we wrote, was watching Dazed and Confused. And uh, there's a scene in that movie where Matthew McConaughey's asking somebody if they have weed. Um, and they do not. But he says, it would be a lot cooler if you did. And so we decided to make that like a love song. So this one goes out to Matthew McConaughey, wherever you are, in whatever Lincoln you're in right now. He's on the, he's on the booth with Mary Wait, is he somewhere. Here? Wait. Wait. You can see it. Wait, are they coming? They're not. Wait, wait. Okay. They are. But uh, this was a number one for Blake Shouten. This is called Sure Be Cool If You Did. <laughs> gonna keep it real like chill like only ever drank or two but it turned into a party when i started talking to you and now you're standing in the neon looking like a high i wanna be on yeah baby sure call no pressure at all don't have to throw back a pretty pink lemonade shooter and lean a little closer. You don't have to keep on smiling, that smile is driving me wild. And when the night is almost over, meet me in the middle of a moonlit Chevy bench, seating to a little bit of country song hanging on. You don't have to keep me falling like this, but it should sure be cool if you did. me falling apart with my heart talking out of my head so let your mind take a little back road just as far as you want to go baby i do whatever you want to do want to do you don't have to throw back a pretty pink lemonade shooter and lean a little closer you don't have to keep on smiling, that smile is driving me wild And when the night is almost over, meet me in the middle of a moonlit Chevy bench Seating to a little bit of country song hanging on You don't have to keep me falling like this, but it should be cool if you did So, um, thanks again uh, for this. Um, what a beautiful, beautiful night. Um, 
Yeah, thank you all. The, 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 we don't get to, uh, we were talking before the show, um, these rounds, which is what we call this in Nashville, where you sit and sing songs and people listen. Uh, the birthplace of this is this place called the Bluebird Cafe, as you guys know. And uh, the Bluebird Cafe could fit maybe three or four times on this stage. It's a tiny little room. And that's what makes it so fun, is the intimacy there. And you literally sit in a round, and most of the time a little square in the middle of the of the room and you're all facing each other and then the crowd is around you and you play these songs and it's really amazing but you know it, it was birthed out this very intimate setting and so to get to sit and play these songs in front of all of you guys it looks like there's about 20 or 30 thousand people um <laughs> it's really it's really an honor i'm not good with numbers and i can't see well but it feels like that to me in my heart uh so it's such a such a huge joy and i, I know that uh, i speak for uh, these guys, when I say that um, we don't take this for granted, it's a real, it's a real treat to get to do this. So thank All you guys right, thank for being here. So yeah, so um, yeah, so thank y'all. It means a lot. Um, this uh, this song um, is a song that I wrote, and then a uh, Mr. Blake Shelton himself, Mr. BS, um, <laughs> the world, the world's sexiest man last year, uh, heard this song, decided to record it. But one of my favorite stories about this is I, I grew up in Mississippi and. Uh, uh, which is basically kind of the southern Utah, but um, <laughs> that's what it's on the license plate. It was on my license plate that I drew it with Sharpie. But um, uh, and and I grew up in Mississippi, and, and uh, my uncle, uh, one of my uncles, uh, is from there, still lives there, and he's a big, towering, intimidating, wonderfully loving but intimidating man. And he called me out of nowhere about the time the song came out, and uh, and he used that call, so I answered, and I'm kind of scared something was wrong, and I said. Hey, uh, what's going on? He said, uh, <laughs> this is exactly how the call went. I said, hello, uh, how you doing? He said, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> heard that song you, uh, you wrote on the radio the other day. And I was like, well, good to talk to you, too. <laughs> he literally said, uh-huh. Hey, uh, here's the thing, though. Uh, it weren't you singing it. And I was like, yeah, it weren't me singing it. He's like, yeah, that's what I said. I said, okay. He said, uh, I got a question for you. That one you, was it? And I was like, no, I, you literally just said it. Well, he said, uh, I got another question for you. That boy steal that song from you. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, uh, I said, no, no, not at all. It's actually a huge honor. You know, it's, it's a big deal. And he said, good, and I quote, I was gonna go up there and get it back from him. I was like, <laughs> don't even know how you do that. But here we go. <laughs> I'll be the fattest fool I need 